Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making this lovely, gentle hemp and shea soap. So you can see it's got a nice little sort of rustic white seam through the center, and we've got a topping of some hemp hearts. So this is a really nice, easy bar to make, and it's great if you have sensitive skin. It's got a wonderful creamy lather from a lot of clay in there, which is one of my favorite things in soap. And the green color comes from just natural, unrefined hemp oil, which is naturally a very deep green color. So this is a cold processed bar, and I'm soaping it at room temperature, which means that I've combined the lye in the water and let that come to room temperature over the course of several hours, and melted the fats and also let those settle to room temperature over the course of several hours. This is one of my favorite ways to make soap. It is so easy. There's no fussing with thermometers and with trying to get everything to sort of settle at the right temperature because they'll just naturally settle at the same temperature, which is room temperature. Couldn't be easier. <laughs> Once you've achieved trace, this is a really, really simple soap to put together. We'll blend in our clay, and then we're going to take about a quarter of the soap batter and put it into a new separate bowl. And so that, that's going to be this layer, so that's the layer we'll blend our titanium dioxide into. And then all you're going to do is put sort of about half of the green stuff in your mold, the white stuff, and then the rest of the green stuff. And then because I wanted to really sculpt up the top and get some nice texture here, I left it in the mold for about 15 to 20 minutes just to let it set up enough that you could really sculpt it. And then I used a spatula to sculpt up the top, as you'll see, and then sprinkled some hemp hearts down the center. And after that, it's just saponify, cut, age, and you're done. So come on, let's get started. So we're starting with our melted fats and our lye water. So I melted these fats and made this lye water about eight hours ago. And so I've let them come to room temperature. So this, uh, this is just a, my 100% room temperature soaping method where you just let everything come to room temperature. It's great to do the um, sort of the melting and the combining part before you go to bed and then make your soap the following morning. So we're going to add the lye water to our fats. And this here, this is pretty much the most dangerous part of making soap when your lye water is all concentrated like this. So at this point in time, if you spilt it on yourself, it would be like spilling a giant pot of boiling water on yourself. Not good. Now that it's in here, it's heavily diluted and it gets less and less dangerous from this point on because as we reach trace, it gets thicker and thicker and your spills become sort of less and less uh, messy, basically. You can imagine the difference between spilling pudding and spilling water, right? One will spread significantly further than the other. So I'm going to give that a bit of a stir and then I set this aside. I'm actually just going to pop this in our lye pot and I've got my stick blender here and let's get this going to trace. All right, we've achieved trace. You can see that when I do this, you can just see a little hint of the drooling soap off the spatula and just leaves a trace in the top of the soap. So I'm gonna keep blending this for another minute or so and then we'll add the clay and then we'll be ready to divide this into two batches and decorate it. So this has gotten a bit thicker and that trace is just a little bit more obvious. And now it's time to add our clay. So I've just got some white kaolin clay here and add that. I like to use quite a lot. That's more than most people recommend, but I've used quite a lot more than this in other recipes and I love the way it turns out. So no worries. So make sure you use your immersion blender to really blend it up so you don't have any clumps. You can stamp it down so that you're really capturing it. All right, give that a stir. I'm not seeing any noticeable clods of clay. So we are ready to divide this in half. So you certainly don't have to divide your soap batches in half, but I find that I like to do the legwork of the mixing and the trace once and then um, 
do the decorating twice. So I'll make one batch of batter, divide it in half by weight, and then make two different batches of soap from it. So set our immersion blender aside, and I'm gonna grab my scale here. And so what I've done is I've added up the weights of everything that's in this pot. So that's all the fats and all the water and all the sodium hydroxide. And so I have that number here and I've written it down and we're gonna divide it by weight. And this part's really important. You gotta divide by weight. Do not try to eyeball it. You will be wrong every time. I know because I did it a bunch of times that way before actually learning my lesson. All right, close enough. That's within a few grams at least. And so when you're considering which batch you want to do first, there's a few things to think about. One, if you want to do something fancy and fiddly, you might consider doing that batch first because the batch that is sitting will thicken up as it sits. Something else to consider is if one of them is gonna be a significantly darker color than the other, do that one last so that way you don't have to clean your immersion blender. So with that in mind, we are going to do the light one first. So I'm gonna set this aside for use later. And we have our pot here. And for this light soap, it's gonna have a wee swirl and I'm just gonna make this an unscented hemp soap. So I have a Pyrex measuring cup here and I'm just going to put you know, a little bit in here. I'm not really fussed with how much probably about a quarter of the amount of batter. And in here, I have a little Pyrex measuring cup that's got some titanium dioxide in some olive oil. And so this helps improve the incorporation of the titanium dioxide, which can be quite clumpy, into this half. Unfortunately, because titanium dioxide is quite clumpy, this is still not entirely smooth, so we will need to break out our immersion blender to ensure we actually get a smooth blend. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more of this titanium dioxide mixture so that we get a stronger contrast. Soaps that get their colors from the oils that are in them tend to lighten up as they saponify, so the amount of contrast that we're gonna see here will likely drop significantly during saponification. That is like both of these will be less green. So we want this to be more white so that it really shows up against this when it's not quite as green as it is now. And probably the rest of this might as well. This part's really all about eyeballing and the amount that you're going to want to use is going to vary hugely based on the size of the batch of soap you're making. So check the description box below and the accompanying blog entry for more information on that. So we are going to grab our mold now. So, uh, the old soap counter shuffle. And here and here so here's my mold and this is a mold that my dad made me and it's awesome and there are plans and measurements for it on my blog and I'll put the link to that in the description box below and somewhere in here um, but one my, my, my favorite thing about this is that for every one inch of the mold this mold holds a 100 gram batch of soap I know that's a pretty wonky metric imperial conversion, but it means that we have um, a 15 inch mold will hold a 1500 gram batch of soap. And that's 1500 grams of oil plus the necessary water and lye. Okay, time to pour. So this is thickened up a bit. You can probably see it's moving a little bit more slowly than it was, which is to be expected. All right, I'll scrape, scrape, scrape it. And aiming for roughly halfway. And I'm gonna get that 
a wee smooth out. So the reason I've used rubber bands here is because parchment paper, which is what this paper is, not wax paper, is so delightfully non-stick that even tape doesn't stick to it. And if you use tape, your parchment paper will pop and this is no good. So we use rubber bands. All right. And gently, gently, gently. I'm trying not to dent the, uh, the green under layer. Scrapey, scrapey, scrapey. I love these spatulas so, so, so much. The link to them will be in the description box below. They are incredible. I have like a veritable bouquet of them. Honestly, if a man wanted to impress me on a date, he should not bring me a bouquet of flowers. He should bring me a bouquet of spatulas. Either that or actual flour, like baking flour. Men have done that in the past and that does work. Smoothie, smoothie, smoothie that out. And then we're going to do our top layer of more green. And remember to be gentle. So kind of doing this from a low, low height and just sort of very slowly scraping this down. And you can't see anything because this pot is opaque. I am sorry. I'm actually going to grab yet another one of my beloved spatulas because uh, it's a lot smaller and I can really get into the corners here to start to smooth that down. And so what I have for a top decoration for these bars is some hemp hearts. So I thought this would be a very suitable topping for a hemp bar. So this is not quite as thick as I would like it to be because I want to sort of scoopy scoopy sculpt it up a bit before adding the hemp hearts. So I'm actually gonna set this aside and we'll do our second batch of soap and then I will come back to this to give it the scoopy treatment that it deserves. So soap mold aside. Now that it has been a little while, we can decorate the top of our hemp soap and so what I wanted to do is kind of scoop it up and give it a bit of a, a bit of a soap mohawk and then run a seam of hemp hearts down the center of it. So I'm just using the spatula here to sort of press the top up and kind of flip it over the top a little bit. Shift this rubber band back. Give me a little bit more room to work. And let's grab those hemp hearts. All right. We will probably lose a bunch of those um, when we actually slice the soap and start to use it. But that's okay, some of them will stick. And now all that's left to do is pop our lid on this and set it away to saponify for 24 hours. So I will see you then. So it's been about 36 hours because I ended up getting busy last night. Let's unmold these bad boys. All right, this is looking pretty good. Check out the sides here. See, I got a nice white line through there. Not even close to being even, but that's okay. And looks like I should have cleaned my mold a little bit better because there's a little bit of a little bit of pink left over from a previous batch. Okay, so I'm going to take off some of the excess bits over here. Set these aside for our 
scrap bin. Which I think with this one, I'm probably just gonna amputate the very end bits as tiny little slices anyway, so I'm not gonna fuss about that too much. So this soap is still quite sticky, so I have a damp cloth here so I can wipe my knife down in between slices. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tip this to the side so that I don't catch any of those hemp hearts and drag them through the soap when we cut it. So, let's see here. We'll lop off our ends here and then go back and divide her up. All right, so I'd say that looks like about half And then into quarters. And there we go. There's some unscented gentle hemp soap. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and check the description box below for the full written recipe and the links to the full written recipe on my blog and links to everything I used in this video. See you next time.